Good morning, those that are in already, we're just uh, going to let everyone get in first. So we'll give it a couple of minutes and uh, then we'll kick this off. Okay, um, so we'll start off. Um, good morning, everyone. Well, thank you and welcome to the latest ARL Association for Rental Living webinar. Um, again, continuing the fantastic series of webinars that David Hills of ARC Workplace Risk has been delivering for us. Um, this is very much focused on the role of principal uh, accountable persons and a guide to digital uh, building safety and the, and the golden thread. David, is, for those who've seen him before, is an absolute expert in this field and will be giving us a lot of very high level in, and, and, and detailed insights. Um, uh, and also, I think, potentially changing a few perceptions um, of things as well. So uh, I look forward to having that. Of course, this uh, we are recording this um, and it will be available from the ARL website um, later on. Um, so, and, and we do encourage questions. Please use the, uh, the, the, the question button at the bottom, the Q&A button um, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and I'll be picking those up and asking David the questions at the appropriate time. So without any more ado, I'm gonna pass over to David and um, and I look forward to hearing what you're gonna say, David. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Graham. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you are all well. Um, my name is David Hills. Uh, I am Senior Director at ARC. Um, I've been ARC with ARC actually for just over 24 years, this is the last week. And uh, I was previously in uh, building control, uh, looking after some pretty large uh, construction sites. I'm a, I'm a chartered surveyor, I'm a fire engineer, and I'm also a health and safety consultant. Um, and uh, I've been supporting a lot of clients in respect of the, the Building Safety Act. Um, just a, a very quick thing about ARC. We, we've, we have access to something around 500 brands who actually work with us, they trust us, and, and they're actually understand, undertaking some transformative outcomes using our expertise and approach and our technology as well. Um, therefore, I'm going to be able to talk about um, how many of the organisations that we work with have been dealing with building safety, the Building Safety Act, Golden Thread and the safety case. Um, I'm, I'm going to point out straight away that uh, during uh, the, the presentation, I intend to show some screens from a system we call CUDA. It's a, a system that we have developed um, in-house to support clients in respect of risk, safety and compliance, including the Building Safety Act. Um, clearly, there are other systems available, but this is the only one I actually have access to. So. What are we going to be covering today? The, the webinar today is look in, looking to identify exactly what the golden thread actually is and what is the safety case and what is required from various parties um, and how you should be managing the golden thread both now and in the future. We're, we're going to look at some recommended practices to ensure compliance, which basically stem from guidance that's been issued by the regulator. Um, and we're also then going to look at how technology uh, can be developed, can be designed, and then very importantly implemented to best suit the business needs. And, and finally, just as, a, as an example, I'm going to take you through a very, very quick case study uh, of one of our clients and how they have dealt with um, successfully, I might add, uh, the, the, the golden thread and safety case and how they have digitized their approach to building safety. So um, the Building Safety Act uh, 2022, along with all of its secondary legislation, is, as we are all acutely aware, very much uh, a reality now. Um, a reality for many, for example, that are actually seeing or being asked by the regulator to uh, apply for their building assessment certificate. So that building assessment certificate process is really the, the start 
for those who are actually managing uh, properties that are built, constructed and in management. Now, the, the new regime, uh, which has obviously been very widely publicized, places obviously some really heavy new requirements on those who are both developing, uh, going through construction, for example, uh, as well as ongoing management of, of higher risk buildings. And it's all about now the use of digital systems for managing, holding, storing, and then transferring building safety and risk related information. Um, again, the digital first approach is very much how the government have been looking to this, both in respect of uh, the need to secure a monitor ongoing building safety information during the design and construction process um, as a client under CDM, and as well as um, taking on that information and maintaining and managing it going forward for the principal accountable person. So today then, I want to focus and provide an outline of our experience um, from PAPs, uh, as I said, based around uh, some of the 500 clients that we work with. So the key messages that I really want to deal with today are, are that first things first, management of this process has to start before operations and mobilization. Um, whatever information a principal accountable person gets at that stage will be their baseline. And I can tell you the, the, the most successful of our clients are those who have a very, very robust transfer uh, approach when they are taking on the management of a property. They're making sure that their baseline is as high as it possibly can be that actually the organization of how you design your, your golden thread and management system really is linked to the decisions that you want to take. Um, they are all interlinked. So you, you really do need to think about how you design your systems for information management based upon the decisions that you think you will need to take in the longer, uh, in, the, in, in the future. The other element I want to talk about is responsiveness. Responsiveness is key. When you read and go through all of the regulation and guidance, it's all about being prompt. It's not about um, being able to wait a year after something has happened and then actually doing something about it. You're going to have to be able to prove that you have dealt with this promptly. And then of course, once you have mobilized, you need to maintain the information systems and keep them up to date and continue to do so for the whole of that building life cycle. So that's really what I want to focus on today. So when we talk about building safety in the golden thread, we've seen and really heard some pretty horrific stories of organizations storing everything in a, a SharePoint system or, or another system, which they've decided to call the golden thread. Now on one property, a 20 story building, um, we saw one organization hold in excess of 53,000 documents and then label it as the golden thread. Now, we, when we were looking at that information, noted that the vast majority of what they had in that particular system was a complete waste of time and was not the golden thread. Building safety is not all of the elements of what a traditional health and safety process or fire safety process is all about. Building safety under the act is about fire and structural safety. So the golden thread has got to support fire and structural safety. Now the golden thread as well is not just an O&M manual. Um, it's got to be a focused set of information and data that you have that relates to fire and structural safety. You, you may want to keep a, a paint color chart, um, but that's not the golden thread. So the golden thread is defined um, both in respect of guidance and in respect of uh, some principal uh, documentation issued by the Building Regulation Advisory Council as 
both the information that you use that allows you to understand the building and the systems that you need for information management to ensure that the information that you have is both accurate and is easily understandable, but very importantly, it can be accessed by those who need it. And of course, it is up to date. It's the information that you need to keep both the building and people safe, both now and in the future. Um, but it all starts well before you have commenced on site. Um, it's, it starts and works its way through the whole of the new gateway process. So we have to start thinking about capturing the golden thread at an early stage. Uh, that's great if you are a developer, because you can start to actually take hold of that information and store that information both at gateway one, pre-construction, uh, gateway two, as you go through construction into gateway three. And I should point out that actually the golden thread and actually making sure that you have it available is going to be incredibly important at the gateway three process. The duty holder, the, the client, uh, et cetera, once they get to completion stage, is going to have to make a formal declaration to the regulator to say that they have available and have passed to the uh, accountable persons, the principal accountable persons and others, such as uh, responsible persons, managing agents, for example, and actually failure to inform the regulator that you have passed that information on and declare that you have passed everything on could mean delays in you actually receiving a completion certificate. Now, if you can't get a completion certificate, you cannot register your building. If you can't register your building, you cannot occupy your building. So getting it right, right from the very beginning, and especially at gateway three stage, is really key. So as your building is being developed, it'll go through the various stages. And I, I've, I've shown this as um, the REBA plan of work, for example, here. But just so you can see, I've actually excluded stage seven for the moment, which obviously deals with in use. And it's therefore vital as you go through these processes that you capture the key information and keep it available. The key information, by the way, relating to fire safety and structural safety. The design and how it matures relating to those two subjects is really important for later on, i.e. your safety case. So once your develop as a, development, as I said, reaches com uh, completion um, and you've taken a look at the available documentation, you're gonna see as well that a vast majority of it is not going to change. It's, it's static in its nature. But the, what the other elements that are going to be needed, though, is as you move into the development of management, stage seven of, of uh, a REBA plan of work, for example, the in-use phase. And again, there's going to be a change of emphasis. Stages zero through to six, the data that you have, for example, is going to be static. There's not going to be many changes. But the data that you hold in respect of in use is going to move over time. And the information that we capture during that process is going to be um, constantly moving, constantly changing, and constantly uh, need for monitoring to make sure that you have everything up to date. It's not going to stand still. So we can see therefore that there's two completely separate elements here. We have our design and construction data, and we have our ongoing management data. The design and construction data is, as I said, relatively static. It's hardly ever going to change. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's going to be there, unless, of course, we change the building or we make changes during the construction process. It is going to be as it was once it's been saved. Whereas the ongoing management document is, as I said, 
very dynamic in its process. It's going to change constantly through the whole process. As you undertake maintenance, those records need to be updated. The testing records need to be updated. As you assess your building, that will need to be updated. Your inspection regime, all of the details of the actions that you've actually taken, why you've taken them, the building safety decisions, as well as things such as resident engagement, they are all going to change. So there is a need, therefore, to ensure that we understand that the processes for managing for principal accountable persons and accountable persons needs to adapt to that requirement. OK, so. A lot of people will turn around and say to me, OK, so what is the golden thread? What we, we know what it's supposed to be. It's information. But what type of information? What I've tried to do here is just give you a very, very brief outline of some of the types of documentation that may be applicable to your particular building. And I think that's the other element as well, the golden thread and the safety case, which I will come on to in a few moments, actually has to be specific to your building. What is applicable to one building may not be applicable to yours. So we need to start to capture details of uh, pre-design, what type of objectives have you set? Have you have you set out, for example, some initial plans relating to things such as the types of materials that you want to use and don't want to use? It's the design information. It's the criteria that's actually used. It's the initial fire strategy. It's the initial structural approach. It's, it's what type of compartmentation arrangements are you intending to put in place? It's all that key building information that you need to hold. And then it's we move into the construction phase and we start capturing all of the construction information, again, relating to fire and structural safety before we get into handover. Now, one thing I would say is it's easier to gather information starting right at the very beginning of the whole process rather than actually try to reverse engineer it. A lot of our a lot of clients have found it very difficult where they they don't have information relating to the building's design, having to re-engineer their understanding of why the building was built in a particular way. Why did the the property not have a fire alarm system? What type of AOV system was installed? What type of sprinkler system has been installed? All of those types of information. Whilst they are very often found in O&M manuals, we have seen a huge amount of experience where the O&M manuals are either um, inadequate, they are partially completed, um, or they have been completed with information that is actually not appropriate to either the building or the actual materials and the systems that have been installed. For example, we have a, a, a property where we were working with a particular client where they turn around and said, yep, we've got the sprinkler system commissioning certificate, which we opened up, which was unsigned, undated, and for a completely different building. Um, but that had been held within the uh, O&M manuals for the last eight to nine years since the building had been constructed and completed. So it's really important that we don't just rely upon the O&M manuals. It's all of the other information that's important. So... Who's responsible for capturing and gathering all of this information? Well, during the design and construction phase, the, the duty to manage the, the golden thread rests with someone called the duty holder, which is, is the duty holder in respect of the CDM regulations. That could be the client, the principal contractor, and of course, the principal designer. During occupation phase, so the in-use phase of, of REBA plan of work, for example, the accountable person and therefore the principal accountable person is responsible for coordinating the golden thread, for keeping it updated and for ensuring that it's both accurate and that it's accessible. Now, the, the interesting element is how the act has been designed and how the secondary legislation has effectively said that it's the accountable person who must have this information, must control this information. 
And if they don't have that information, then the regulator in their recent guidance relating to the golden thread has stated very clearly that they are looking for accountable persons to justify why they do not have that particular information. It could be that the information just was not transferred over to you. Um, the Regulation 38 material, for example, just wasn't transferred over to you when you perhaps took on management or, or, or actually transferred the building out from uh, design construction into operations. At the end of the day, it's the accountable person and the principal accountable persons who have responsibility. And again, where the building already exists, the regulator has made it very, very clear. They are looking to each accountable person to make reasonable efforts to obtain that information and explain and justify what and how they've gone about it. So how have uh, some of our clients dealt with this? Well, let's just take one of our clients, which had a, 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 a 14 story block uh, based in the north, that was constructed in the 1950s, 1953, actually. Um, the architect is still going, um, and so, by the way, is the structural engineer. Um, the local authority is no longer available. Um, it's a different local authority. But um, our client, uh, supported by ourselves, we spoke to the local authority, um, the local authority said that they had no information relating to buildings that old. In fact, they, would you believe it, had a fire, which was uh, rather convenient or, or inconvenient for our clients. Um, we contacted the architect. The architect um, suggested that they had not saved that type of information, certainly going back that far. Um, historically, they, they could only go back to the 1980s um, and they didn't have anything else. And so did the structural engineer. So we were able to actually ensure that within the safety case report, all of the actions that our client had taken to capture that information were included so we can justify and prove that the accountable person has done everything reasonable. They've made reasonable inquiries. Let's go back then to the, the safety case and, and think about how that safety case, which again, I'll, I'll, I'll go on to the definition of it in a few moments, but how the, the, the safety case and the golden thread then extends into in use. But I wanted to point out one particular element. One of the parts of the definition was that the principal accountable person has to ensure that the information that they receive is accurate. And therefore, we would strongly recommend that whatever you're doing, when you're taking on the management of a property, it really is important at that handover stage to get your baseline right, to make sure that you have all the information that you need and that they are or all of that information is accurate. And the reason why you need to do that is because from day one, you have that accountability. The regulator is expecting you to understand that building and to be able then to actually take that information and separate out what's called your safety case. So the definition of the safety case is all of the information and the systems that you would use to manage the risk of fire spread, and structural safety within your building. So again, we're going back now very much to the focus here of what building safety is about, fire and structural safety. So the safety case actually forms part of your golden thread. It is very, very focused information about how you are managing fire spread and structural safety. So again, Let's go back to our golden thread again. All of this information is going to be held digitally um, very neatly in, a, in one or two or three systems that you're going to have. Um, and at the end of the day, part of it is going to be your safety case. And it's your safety case, which actually then supports the narrative document, which is known as your safety case report. So again, just to reiterate, the material that we need 
in order to produce a safety case report is the safety case and that's the material relating to building safety i.e fire spread and structural safety only again apologies for laboring the point but very often we see that so many organizations spend huge amounts of time energy and therefore money in in managing information that they actually do not need to manage for building safety they might need to do it for some other purpose but they certainly don't need to actually undertake it for building safety so when we then go back to the guidance issued by the regulator they've made it very clear that actually the golden thread is all about making sure that the right people have the right information when they need it. Now, the, the right people are those persons who are required to have access to that information so that they can carry out their duties. That's going to be the principal accountable person, the accountable person. If you are using a managing agent, it's going to be your managing agent as well. The right information means that it's going to be that information relating to fire and structural safety, and it's going to be presented in a way that actually allows the receiver to actually use it. And then the right time is actually when the actual information will actually add value to a process. And the very important elements about what the guidance has been uh, stating is that each golden thread and each safety case will be individual to each particular building. It's going to be bespoke to that particular building, and it's going to be specific to the building and its occupants, its residents. So when it comes down to the type and nature of the information that you hold, you're going to have a, a, a big variety of, of, of types of document or information that you're going to hold, but they've got to be readily available. In addition, the, the regulator has made it very clear that it's about capturing the information as you go. It's about making sure that as you pass through those construction gateways, if you're involved in the development phase, that you actually take time to check that you have got all of the required information in a format that is usable and that it's accurate. It's about checking the information when you get to gateway three. It's about making sure that you have accurate information about making sure that for example if your if your plans are shown as as built plans that they are actually as built plans it's about making sure that you start to think about how you capture the information for management it's then about maintaining the information up and keeping it up to date as you undertake your management process or as you make changes to the building or to the design it's being able then to hand over that information, not only to the accountable person, if you are a duty holder, client, etc. But if you are an accountable person, you will have a duty to then hand over that information to a responsible person, if you are using the uh, a managing agent, or if you then decide to sell on uh, and, uh, and take that uh, particular asset out of your portfolio, to the next accountable person. And again, at that, that stage, you will be required to actually make declarations to the regulator that you have handed that information over to the new accountable person. So just to reiterate then about the golden thread and the safety case, it's important to remember that this is a digital record of all of that crucial building information relating to fire safety and structural safety. And that actually you need to start making sure that if you're in the de development phase, that you capture that information from design right the way throughout the whole of the building's life cycle. The government have made it very, very clear that the golden thread um, has to be stored digitally, but they've also made it very clear that this can be on multiple systems. And I think this is where the term a single source of truth is perhaps a little misleading. Um, a single source of truth means that you could in fact be using multiple systems to store that single source of truth. It's making sure that we don't have duplication. 
It's making sure that you have all of the information available. If it's on one system, it may not be on another. That's fine. As long as you know where it is and you have access to it and you are able, therefore, to pass that on to the people who need it, that's the important part. As I said earlier as well, the safety case forms part of your golden thread. So we really need to make sure that the golden thread, that baseline, is as robust as possible if you're going to support your safety case and then onwards support your safety case report. OK. Some of the guidance that's been issued by the regulator is actually pretty clear and they've they've actually provided us with a, a list of effective requirements for what or how you should be measuring your performance in respect of compliance of your golden thread. So for example, one of the elements is that your information must be accurate. It has to be about the building, about building safety. And as I said, we need to focus on fire and structural. It has to be kept digitally, but again, it can be on more than one system. It must be kept securely. We obviously have GDPR issues and other data security issues that need to be considered. It has to provide that single source of truth, but again, it can be on multiple systems. It also has to be available to the people who need the information to do their jobs or to make decisions. It also has to be available to other persons as well. So when that person needs the information, say, for example, a resident, it's got to be available for them in some form that is reasonable, re readable and usable. And again, it's got to be presented in a way that can be easily used. And interestingly, the secondary legislation actually makes it very clear that certain documents have to be written in a particular way so that a layperson can understand them, which is why a large number of, of clients and, and organizations are now looking for summaries of documents that they can use as a, as a, a guide to uh, how that particular document can be used by any person who wants to use it, wants to read it, or needs to read it. And ultimately, the golden thread has got to be supportive of your safety case report. It's it's a waste of time to hold information that actually is a negative to your um, safety case report. If you've got issues, then you need to action those issues in order to support your safety case report. You, you've got to keep the information. But actually, if that information is telling you some bad things, you need to deal with those bad things as quick as possible. OK. So far, then, I've talked about the, the golden thread and the safety case and, and focused very much on construction documentation um, uh, with a little bit of, of, of the management processes that you need to have in place. But it's not just about construction documentation. One of the biggest areas of misunderstanding that we've seen about the golden thread is that all it is is a series of documents. It is not. It is the systems that you use as well. But then the golden thread, as it moves into the construction phase, uh, out of construction phase into management, is going to expand. It isn't just about how you maintain and manage the building. Yes, you've got to ensure that your testing information, your inspection information, your servicing of plant, the, the equipment, or actually the building itself, how that's maintained, you have to therefore keep records of that. Now, those records could come in the form of reports, uh, certificates, um, commissioning certificates, for example. Um, but it isn't just those elements as well. They could, for example, include information that's held within an email. If, for example, your organization uses email to approve certain uh, uh, actions or uh, activities, that becomes part of your golden thread. As is mandatory occurrences, it's really important that we start thinking about the actions and the activities that you will need to take if you have a safety occurrence in your building. We need to now make sure, because the law requires, 
that you undertake investigations. Again, that is now part of your safety case and part of your golden thread. Anything, by the way, that affects a fire or structural safety, a safety occurrence relating to that, um, there is some other definition which I, I won't intend to go to, must be maintained. It's about detailing and recording and managing residents' complaints and then making sure that you have all of the actions that you dealt with and that you deal with them promptly and that those that information is actually stored as part of your golden thread and your safety case. It's about risk remediation. If you have a risk assessment undertaken, then you need to manage those actions, those required steps, as they call it, within the Act. And you have to, again, deal with them promptly. You've got to be able to prove that you've dealt with them promptly. So keeping information relating to timelines, when you knew about it, what action you took immediately, what action you have done to actually make sure that those risks have been remediated in complete, uh, completely. It's about also resident engagement. All of that is now part of your golden thread and your safety case. It's about making sure that you have the right information of, available if the resident asks for a copy. Again, you're going to have to make sure that your systems are there so you can deliver those. It's about making sure that your competence and your procurement methodology and the management of, of actions are, are in place. So you need to make sure that your supply chain are competent um, or has what's called organizational uh, capability. Um, and that capability has to be uh, considered where, for example, it's an organization that's supporting you rather than an individual. It's about writing your safety case report at the end of the day. You need to be able to write the safety case report and be confident that the information you have is accurate, that it supports your safety case report, because that report is a vital document in making sure that your buildings can be occupied and can remain in occupation. So what happens if we get it wrong? Clearly, there are implications if we get it wrong. There's going to be reputational damage. You only have to look at um, home view, for example. Um, so much uh, is, is put on home view in respect of, of people's opinions. So reputational damage is a major issue that needs to be considered. But it's other implications that can be affected as well. You're, there are legal repercussions. You've got increased sanctions that are out there. And in the worst cases, there's a possibility of even imprisonment. There's the loss of trust from residents. Um, and very much in the worst case, there's actually the possibility that you could lose control of your building. This is only going to be very rarely used, but it's, it's if the regulator is of the opinion that you are persistently flouting your duties, they could take your building into what they call special measures and take over operational control of both the budget and the building itself and undertake works and then charge it back to you. So there is an economic loss issue as well, but we've also got other implications such as data security issues that we need to maintain. We've got, as I said earlier, management of our supply chain, ensuring that our supply chain um, is competent and able to deliver the work. And then of course, there are other things such as transfer issues. And that's issues relating to um, making sure that you can transfer a building from one part, one organization to another organization um, and get the approval of the regulator. So. Using technology to manage this whole process and oversee compliance is for us, it's all about joining the dots. So the key information or key aspects of this is it's really about five key areas that I want to lastly focus on. It's about knowing what you have and what's missing in respect of your golden thread. It's about knowing what is due or what is out of date. It's about making sure that you have, or have the latest version. The worst thing you can do is to hand over a document to either the regulator or a resident or, or a, a, the fire authority if they ask for it. There's actually an out of date document. It's about making sure that you manage all of the information and the systems. 
And at the end of the day, it's about making sure that you're able to report and that you've got good governance over what you have. So let's quickly go through those particular areas then, um, starting off with knowing what you have and what's missing. It's really important that we start to think about and making sure that your systems, and again, that could be more than one um, software platform or solution, gives you that 360 degree situational awareness in whatever form that's appropriate to you. It could be a grid of actions. It could be, for example, a list of documents and those documents are available and you can see exactly and have the visibility that you need to actually ensure that you know what you have and you know what's needed. It's about a clear understanding of the gaps and it's about making sure that you understand the status of where you are currently sitting. It's about making sure as well uh, about knowing what's due and what's going to go out of date. And again, having that situational awareness and again, whatever format is right for you, about making sure that you have those notifications and alerts so the system is working for you to support you, to make sure that you know exactly what's missing, what's due, what's out of date, and the status of those in a very easy to understand process. And again, having that multi-status understanding is going to be key when it comes to supporting your safety case report. It's about ensuring that as well that you have the latest version. So again, making sure that your information storage process is the right process for what you want to do, what you need to do, that single source of truth. So you're not having a duplicate um, or you're having out of date documents that are actually being used. It's making sure that your version history is available, but you have access to all of the previous information. It's about making sure that you are managing all of those systems, not just the documentation, though, because, again, a big misunderstanding in the act is just thinking, OK, this is just purely about construction information. This is also about other areas such as, for example, maintaining and managing your risk remediation, making sure that you can determine what's controlled, what's uncontrolled. How long have you taken to actually deal with those particular issues? It's about recording mandatory occurrences, those safety occurrences, and making sure that you investigate them and then report upon them or have the ability to report upon them. It's about being able to manage complaints. It's about then being able to manage competency and organizational capability. And then finally, it's all about making sure that the reporting you have, and to be honest with you, this is where I think a vast majority of organizations fail. They start with capturing all of the information that they think they need, rather than determining what it is they actually need to report on and how they need to govern the process. So we would strongly recommend that you start off with this reporting and governance process right at the very beginning. It will therefore allow you to protect yourselves, especially the directors and managers. Because at the end of the day, it's the directors and managers who could be called into question. If they are seen to have consented to certain activities or connived or have been neglectful, reporting is going to therefore protect directors and managers from being accused of those particular processes. So again, it's having that situational awareness, making sure that you know on a day-to-day -day basis it's being able to drill down instantly to actually see exactly where the processes are going, what's happening, why are we were concerned about certain areas. It's about having that confidence in the data. And very importantly, it's about having that understanding. It's about making sure that whether we're talking about uh, mandatory occurrences, risk remediation, whether we're talking about document compliance, it's making sure that you can adapt so you can ask those different questions where you need to. The last couple of slides I just really want to quickly go through in before I get to the uh, case study is really talk about where these systems can sit. And again, making sure that you understand that the government have made it clear that there could be, well, we are expecting to see multiple systems. So this is just typical of, of one of our clients who has 
three particular systems. They've got a risk and safety management system that they use. They have a construction management system, and they then also have a portfolio and asset management solution. They tend to feed information into uh, an output uh, system such as Power BI, and then they can report out to that. And they also then tend to have something that's going to allow them to share information with a resident, such as a, a residence portal. Now, some of these systems can in fact be integrated with each other, but there is no real need for that. Um, unless of course that is, is part of your, your strategy and your processes. So what I'm trying to say here is, is that don't expect that you'll find one solution that's gonna fit all of your needs. There may be something out there, um, but more than likely you're going to rely upon a number of software platforms and software solutions that help you store that information, manage that information, and more importantly, manage and monitor that information on a day in day basis. Okay, the last couple of seconds then, I just really wanna very quickly take you through a case study. Um, and again, this is uh, one of our clients who we've been working with for, I think it's about, about eight years. Um, and it has a, a holding company which is situated overseas. Um, clearly, I, I can't tell you who the client is, but um, I would expect that some people may be able to work this out as we go through this whole process. Um, they uh, hold significant numbers of residential properties, uh, but with some commercial uh, properties within their portfolio. They are currently located in London and the south, right away from Hatfield down to the south coast. They are currently expanding into the Southwest, Bristol um, uh, and beyond. And in addition, they are moving up into the North such as Manchester and Newcastle. They currently have 22 higher risk buildings in scope of the Building uh, Act, Building Safety Act, sorry. Plus again, the other buildings that they have which are not in scope. And that mixed portfolio is 44% uh, BTR, 22% student accommodation, and the rest is on uh, private rented sector uh, and other bits and pieces as well. They undertake their own design management in-house. They also have their own internal construction and project management teams, but those internal project management all of the works, um, it'll depend upon the type and nature of the development they're actually undertaking. They also have some ongoing management. They use mostly uh, one managing agent, um, but they also have some in-house uh, management. For example, in the BTR elements, they fully outsource their, um, their management. In the student accommodation, they've literally got it through and, and handed it over to a student accommodation provider. They are managing the whole process. And in fact, in that instance, they have become the principal accountable person, not our client. Uh, and uh, in, that should, in fact, say um, uh, uh, private rented sector, they have some in-house management with assistance in, in respect of supply chain management. OK, so the approach that they took right from the very beginning, and this is about two and a half, three years ago that we started working on this whole project. And what I would say is that they've got to a position now where they have all of their safety case reports completed and that they believe they have a full, robust and detailed golden thread and management system in place that actually supports them and doesn't hinder them when they are called upon. So first things that first, they agreed what they wanted to prove. They agreed what they needed as a particular outcome. What meant, what was compliance to them? What and how would they therefore be able to justify their position. And they looked at that both internally and externally as well. So they agreed what reporting was actually going to be required right at the very beginning. It's the first thing they did before they started designing and procuring any other systems, that's the approach they took. They then developed an information management strategy for building safety, considering both the development documentation through the various phases, the handover arrangements, the processes they have, the systems that they use, and they develop that across all of their teams and they agreed it at strategically at board level. They developed formal management 
procedures and arrangements so that they knew that they were going to follow those constantly and consistently. And those were there also to protect the directors and the managers to make sure that uh, those everyone was working to an agreed policy and procedure, which meant that uh, they couldn't be seen to be conniving or neglectful, etc. And then they developed the systems that they wanted to use. And initially, they were using and are using CUDA, our system, to support in respect of risk, compliance, and safety management. They were using that internally um, as managers, but also they asked their managing agents to actually adopt it, which they have. And that's being used for risk management, remediation. It's being used for competence management, checklists uh, through a mobile app. Um, all of their maintenance outcome details are included, as well as things such as uh, recording mandatory occurrences. And it's also there to support the reporting processes. But again, they recognized that there was a need for additional, uh, additional systems. And uh, they were using and are still using a site. So, for example, they all of their construction documentation, um, all of their development information, all of that static documentation is held on a site. Um, and they continued to use that, um, making sure that they understood and separated what was actually required as their golden thread and safety case from all of the other documentation. This particular client is using Dwellance Residence Portal to share information throughout their uh, portfolio. And in addition, they utilized an in-house asset management system, which is a, a legacy system that allowed them to manage the asset and manage finance as well. So just to bring this to a conclusion, I'm a two or three minutes over, my apologies. Um, just really wanted to give you a few takeaways from uh, what I've gone through that First things first, management has to start before operations in respect of the golden thread and the safety case. Um, it has to start at initial design and go through the entire life cycle of the building. And um, when you take on a property, what information you are provided will be your baseline. So make sure that you have the right baseline. It is much harder to chase information later. It is incredibly expensive and very, very difficult to reverse engineer information. So get the information that you need. And therefore, we would strongly recommend think about auditing a process when you take on a new building to ensure that you have that right information. If you're going to get the safety case wrong or your golden thread um, as well, that has major implications, both in respect to financial um, operational and, of course, reputational as well. It's about making sure that your systems and the systems that you design are all interlinked uh, with your decisions. Think about the design of your systems for safety information and information management before, um, and sorry, and link that with the types of decisions you want to make before you start getting into actually implementing the systems in place. It may be that the systems that you currently use are perfectly acceptable. It may be that you will need to think about um, supplementing what you currently have with other systems. But it comes down to ensuring that you know the outcomes first. Responsiveness is key. You've got to be able to make sure that you are able to prove that you've dealt with things promptly. Once you've mobilized, we would strongly recommend that you maintain that information, keep it up to date and continue to do so. Continue to check, continue to audit, continue to make sure that you've got everything in place. Use systems that allow you to do the heavy lifting there to actually take that role off of you. It's about making sure that you understand that it's unlikely that a single software application can do absolutely everything. Your management system will probably require you to use a small number of software solutions in order to deliver this. Finally, then, your system can be as simple and convoluted as, as, as required. It's up to you. You've just got to justify what you have. And our approach means that you must take 
a strategic approach, a top-down strategic approach allows you to join all of the dots. Graham, uh, apologies, I've gone about five minutes over what I was intending to. So um, I know we've got a bit of time left. So any questions? We have. Thank you, David. Very comprehensive. In fact, I had some questions which you um, summarised very well at the end. So I don't have to ask mine now, but I do have a couple coming from the audience. Firstly, um, question about um, uh, I couldn't see that an asset register. I could not see an asset register listed on the typical golden thread safety case. Am I correct in assuming this would apply for the handover phase? Yep, certainly. As I, as I said, you know, an asset register is, is fine. The, the the documents I provided there were just typical types of documents, but certainly an asset register, making sure that you know what you've got. It's that baseline again. It's understanding that baseline. I know what the building contains. I know the information I have. I'm therefore able to justify both the safety and structural position in respect of that particular building. That's great. Um, second question coming in is, um, if the building has retail units on the ground floor, how do they fit into the golden thread and build building safety case? Um, that's a really interesting question. Um, it depends upon the... Again, no one building is exactly the same. Um, Information um, under the regulator reforms fire safety order means that if you are responsible for that particular building, you have a duty to cooperate and coordinate with other responsible persons. And those responsible persons will include the retailer. Um, you are therefore going to share information with each other about risks. The information that you receive from that retailer has to form part of your safety case has to form part of your golden thread. It's really important, especially if you have higher risk environments um, as a retail position, um, that you get that information. Cooking facilities, for example, um, hardware stores that decide to do some butane gas. You're not going to get a force field around a retail unit if there's going to be an explosion or if there's a fire. So making sure that you understand how they manage processes is an important part of your golden thread and safety case. So there is a very clear need to cooperate and coordinate <laughs> with each uh, retailer. That's brilliant. Final question, in and um, is, is whether you'd be happy, David, for these slides to be circulated to those who are on, are on the call? We, 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 we are going to very, very, very happy to do that. We will transfer these over to... Um, ARL and, and you can therefore absolutely um, transfer them out to anybody who needs them. That's brilliant. Thank you. And just to be clear, the, the this has been recorded and will be going live um, on the ARL website as well for future reference. Um, thank you, David. Just, just got a, a couple of points uh, to, to, to raise um, from the ARL upcoming events. As, as you're aware, we run a, a series of webinars like this, generally on a Tuesday morning. Um, the next one coming up is on the 4th of June, and that's on the impact of the Renters Reform Bill on Build, on build to Rent. Um, so very important and pertinent uh, subject matter from another angle uh, there. Uh, we also have a number of study tours coming up, which you may be interested in. Next week, we're up in Leeds at the UK Reef Conference, and we're running two study tours up there, one for open to anyone uh, on the 21st of, June, of May um, in the afternoon, and the second one specifically for local authorities. So if you, if you have any clients who are local authorities and could benefit, who would benefit from seeing Build to Rent in the flesh, um, we are running at that local authority event for free for them um, directly. Um, and so please, please check the, um, ARL website for details and uh, pass that on. Uh, finally, two other study tours which we're running, one in London um, across a number of uh, areas of Battersea, Croydon um, and Stratford, and that's on the 5th and 6th of June. And it includes a very good dinner as well, by the way. I'd, I'd, I'd encourage anyone to go on to that. Um, and then finally, in, in Manchester on the 16th and 17th of July. Again, please check the, uh, the website for details. Thank you once again, David, for your comprehensive and extremely interesting review of, 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 of the Golden Thread and the role of the PAP. Um, really appreciate that. Thank you, everyone, for attending and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.